Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to the best movie news show the galaxy has ever known. We're so excited you guys are joining us here for Hump Day. We have a lot of exciting stories to get to, and Ashley's going to get very emotional because it's the last game that Kobe Bryant will ever play. Uh, Try to keep your emotions in check. <laughs> love you, Kobe. Love you, Kobe. Also here, Dennis. Then. Uh, yeah, a lot of news to talk about. Uh, I think Dennis, the dream crusher is here today. <laughs> talk about certain things. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, my interview. Me and Wendy interviewed the Russo brothers for Captain America Civil War. That's Woo-hoo. on the channel right now. Also here, John Schnepp. That used to be my to- my title, Dream Crusher, yes. but since then, <laughs> I've just become beloved by everyone with all my opinions on Batman v Superman. What's up, everybody? I love you. It's going to be a very opinionated show here. We have a lot of exciting stuff to get to. Ashley, what is up first? Marvel Studios finally revealed their first teaser trailer to Doctor Strange, introducing us all to Doctor Stephen Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. The trippy footage that many fans dubbed the inception of the Marvel Cinematic Universe introduces us to the brilliant surgeon Strange who discovers the realms of magic and alternate dimensions after his hands become crippled in a devastating accident. The movie is directed by sinister director Scott Derrickson and also stars Chewy Tell Edgio for Mads Mikkelsen, <coughs> Rachel McAdams, Tilda Swinton, and Benedict Wong. Mark, what do you think of the trailer for Doctor Strange? Well, not only can you get our thoughts right now, you can also check out all three of our reactions to the Doctor Strange trailer because magically, Dennis and I were just here at the studio late last <laughs> night, so we watched as soon as it came on the line right after it aired on Jimmy Kimmel and then today Schnepp rolls into the studio the biggest Doctor Strange fan that we know he had not seen the trailer yet so we decided to turn on the camera for him as well you can catch Dennis and I's reaction right now on the channel Schnepp is going to be up a little bit later to give us some time to enjoy just being on the internet by ourselves (laughs) and I, I, I heard noises coming from the office when you were watching the trailer so I want to get to you in a second for me personally Dennis when we were watching it I was really into the trailer. I thought it was a really well done trailer. It was very different than anything else we've seen from Marvel and we talked about how much pressure this trailer has on it because a lot like Guardians of the Galaxy a couple years ago most people like us who are even fans of Marvel do not know much if anything about Doctor Strange. So this trailer had to ingratiate us into that world a little bit, show us a little bit of what's going on with this mysterious character played by Benedict Cumberbatch and also show us some really cool imagery. The images were awesome. I love the inception feel of it i love that money shot of the buildings separating themselves slowly it feels like scott derrickson who comes from a hard background has a firm grip on what this mythology is the trailer didn't wow me as much as maybe i thought it might but i think it wasn't necessarily going for oohs and ahs it was just being very mysterious and showing us just a little bit behind the curtain as to what this movie is going to be dennis let's get to you first before schnapp just (laughs) Bubbles yeah. like a little schoolboy. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was all right. I thought it was decent. You mean did our review? Uh, the visuals look cool, but it just hasn't sold me yet. It hasn't grabbed a hold of me. Go like I have to go see Doctor Strange. That's probably because I I really didn't read Doctor Strange when I was younger. Mm-hmm. It just never was part of my comic book uh, pickups every week. Uh, so I'm not. I, I'm familiar with the origins and everything. So look cool. Tilda Swinton to me. I'm telling you. That thing, she looks like Conehead from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> she looks ridiculous. I thought they were going to, since they were going to do the gender bending thing and, and the race bending thing, I thought maybe they're going to make her a kind of a spiritual being. It's Tilda Swinton with a bald cap on, right? <laughs> and she's wearing this weird outfit. So for me, that part kind of took me out of it. I mean, I it, that doesn't mean the movie's not going to be good. And, and, her, and her performance might be great as well. I just thought it, she looked a little funny. So that's my thoughts. Schnepp, do you come from France? Are you excited about the Coneheads? Are you excited about Doctor Strange? Give us your take. I am over the moon with this uh, with this trailer. Oh, I good. loved it. I absolutely love this trailer. Um, I'm in the exact opposite camp of Dennis. I thought Tilda Swinton looked fantastic as the Ancient One. I'm glad they gave her that kind of bald head, kind of um, uh, like kung fu type of you know that the, it felt like they were adding a little bit of uh, some of the Matrix and some of the old kung fu uh, film, uh, like that TV series with David Carradine it had that kind of flavor to it where she's kind of the she really is like the master and that's what was so great when she like literally punches him into the astral plane that was pretty sweet and uh, yeah. and then we kind of go on this little quick uh, quick trip really fast through some of these uh, different kind of uh, visuals 
then he comes back and he's like, teach me. I just, I really liked, also, I mean, if you haven't read the comics, they're basically kind of giving you a flashback, flash forward origin of, you know, why he's searching for this ancient one is to fix his hands so they could become the one of the greatest surgeons again. He is a very selfish person in the beginning of the film, but I don't know how they're going to actually, if what we're seeing, like how they cross cut it, I think that's kind of how they will do it. They're like, they're not going to spend a lot of time on the previous version of his life, like him being a selfish surgeon. We'll see that. I My guess is in flashbacks as he's searching and, you know, you see him sort of going back to his past and then it'll flash to you know flash forward back and forth but anyway i thought the the trailer was great it gave you little hints and and you saw all the main characters true it's ag4 benedict cumberbatch um tilda swinton and of course mads mickelson and even uh what's amy amy at amy Mc, rachel rachel Mc mcadams Adams. There's um, still an Adams in there. Yeah, there's yeah. an Adams in there. I mean, there. look, it's interesting you bring up the origin story element to it because I am foaming at the mouth for something original that's not like another Batman <laughs> or another Spider-Man. And so maybe them introducing it the same way that they did in Deadpool, where it's like we're going to have this action scene that we're going to keep cutting back to yeah. what his life was like before, pre, and post car accident in this case. That's an intriguing prospect to me. But, Dennis, it seems like you weren't necessarily bothered by the fact that Tilda Swinton wasn't the gender or wasn't the race that we got to know that person to be in the comics this is just something else to you we just didn't have that impact it just you looked wanted. weird to me <laughs> i mean she just looked out of place well, she's I, gonna be a little weird because she's just hanging out in this temple yeah and she but knows i don't different know astral you know when her ancient one i just feel like I, I feel like she should be like old looking and just have like kind of have like some sort of almost spiritual look to her it just looked like tilda swinton now, the funny thing is i tweeted this <laughs> la last night uh, i must be doing something right because Yesterday morning, I'm getting yelled at by DC fanboys, <laughs> and then last night, I'm getting yelled at Marvel fanboys. So I'm, it's like I can't win, right? Like because it's like who? I guess who's paying me? Is Marvel paying right. me more, or DC's paying me more? I don't know. Dennis, I, welcome to my, my brand new show. It's called Hater Street. Yeah. You'll be my first uh, guest. Everybody at Image and Valiant Comics <laughs> yeah. loves Dennis right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does the gender slash race bending thing bother you at all? Because you were such a huge fan of the not at all, material? not at all. You know, when I first heard that Tilda Swinton was cast as the ancient one, I was like, good on them. You know, let's change it up a little bit. You know, I, it doesn't bother me. I mean, like I said. Comics are comics and movies are totally different. I don't need the comics to replicate the movies. In fact, I like it when it's different because I love the original Doctor Strange comics. I just want to see an adaptation. Like I've said many times before, movies are just Elseworlds versions of the comic books. If you love the comics, you'll always have those. Movies are a different a, an attempt to translate that into film to make a filmic story, a cinematic vision of the comic book. And it's totally different. So with this, I got to say, I think Scott Derrickson and the whole team for myself have delivered what I've always wanted to see on screen with Doctor Strange with just the smallest tidbit of this teaser. I can't wait to see the full trailer, which I think people like Dennis, I think you'll, because you don't, you're not familiar with the character, yeah. I think when you see the full trailer, when you see some of the cool magic that they're doing, my guess is that it'll win you over. This I, is, I, yeah, I, this sort is of like, just yeah. a teaser trailer. I'm just judging based on this. Yeah. The next full trailer could be awesome. I could love it. I just, for now, it just, it, it didn't like, totally wow me i geeved out i was yelling i i, I really was uh w watching it for the first time was uh, was really exciting for myself having like read this character for so many years to see different versions of all these different characters in you know as live action and really shot beautifully and it just feels like the scope of it and the mystery of it is there so i'm i'm really excited it will truly be like kind of a weird action horror suspense thriller that's what it feels like to me yeah look we're all very excited to go to this very new astral plane come the fall and maybe in this plane the lakers are actually competitive ashley what's our next story that was mean. <laughs> <laughs> Warner Brothers has finally and officially confirmed a standalone Batman movie is in the works with Ben Affleck. The announcement came yesterday during the studio's panel at CinemaCon in Las Vegas, where WB chairman and CEO Kevin Sujahara hyped 10 DC movies planned over the next five years. Though Sujahara mentioned working with Affleck on the Batman movie, he did not clarify if he would be directing, as most rumors state. No word yet on a production start date, which can be tricky to find, seeing as Affleck is already busy with post-production on his Live by Night feature that he wrote, directed, and starred in, and shooting schedule for WB's Justice League. Schnepp, what are your thoughts about WB and DC Films' official announcement? Well, it was actually officially clarified that he is directing it. Um, Hollywood Reporter and a lot of other uh, news sites verified it with Warner Brothers. He's writing it, he's directing it, and he's acting as Bruce Wayne and Batman. And I love it. I, I think the takeaway from my, myself and a lot of other people 
who who either liked it or didn't like the Batman v Superman film was that Ben Affleck was a great choice to play Bruce Wayne and Batman. I think that the visual interpretation of Batman in this new um, you know DC universe, I loved it. I loved that kind of that this version of Batman. So I'm really happy to see that it's going to continue on. I trust Ben Affleck as a writer. I trust him as a director. And I trust him now as playing Bruce Wayne and Batman, having seen him do it. So I'm really excited about this. I hope it's October 2018, because that would just be a perfect Halloween to see the Batman in theaters. So yeah, I, I'm really excited that they finally announced it. They just haven't announced the date yet, but I'm glad that he's a part of it. And I'm glad he's doing the film. Yeah, this is very exciting news for me. And I'm sure, Dennis, you're wearing a shirt that might indicate yeah. you're kind of yo, pumped yo, about yo. this as well. So, Dennis, we're not only getting a standalone Batman movie starring and directed by Ben Affleck, something that a lot of us speculated on. Comment not just on that, but also the fact that Suchihara stated that they're planning 10 movies over the next five years. That bodes pretty well for DC fans, right? Yeah, I mean, it shows that they have confidence. And despite, you know, Batman v Superman's mixed reactions and maybe a disappointing box office, they're still moving ahead. I'm super excited for the solo film. Just like Schnepp said, like, Despite all the the mixed stuff about Batman v Superman, everyone agreed. Everyone loved Ben Affleck as Batman. So did I. And it, it, it's the worst kept secret in Hollywood. We knew he was going to direct right. and write and star in this movie for years. Once they cast him, we're like, oh, he's going to direct it. And now he finally is. Um, I'm interested because we know that he can do character because he's directed, you know, movies like Argo and, and The Town and whatnot. I want to see what he does with action, this type of big budget action. We saw, is he going to follow kind of Zack Snyder? Is he, did he learn from Zack Snyder at all how to do action? Or is he going to go his own route and maybe do a different style? That's a great point. I mean, there was a lot of good action sequences that you saw in the town, and Argo was more yeah. of like yeah. building up suspense. But I love this idea. This is something that one of the many great things, and yes, there were a lot of great things in Batman versus Superman, was seeing this version of Batman. My big question is, when is this movie going to take place? is are we getting the Batman is it going to be before the events or after the events of B versus S and which Batman are we getting are we getting that one that just is very almost like the Punisher where he's brutal he doesn't care about stabbing somebody or even taking a life where it seemed like in this movie this most recent one he was cool with that because he had this mission to you know pacify this alien threat that he perceived in Batman versus Superman so I think that what one of the one of the other brilliant things that Batman versus Superman did is it gave us the origin story of Batman. So now when we have this new standalone movie coming out, we already know what happened. Right. We saw we, we saw your parents get capped. It was really sad. We know your mom's <laughs> name is Martha. Uh, we went to the funeral. Alfred's <laughs> raising you. you saw you fall in the cave. cave. We saw all that stuff. So now, as much as I love origin stories, we've seen that one a number of times, and now we've seen this version of it, so we can move on with the rest of our lives and see a new adventure with Batman. You know, I gotta add, it's like, it's really fun because we all, we've talked about this. Ben Affleck is a gigantic Batman fan. He had actually built a bat cave in one of his former houses like like this guy like is a real Batman fan so to have him writing it is incredible because he's already an Oscar winning writer to have him like the kinds of things that he's going to be able to pull out like I can imagine he'll do an entire like five or ten minute opening sequence maybe with a whole other villain before we even get to the main story like I don't know what he's going to do but I'm, it's really it's like the Russo's doing Captain America where you have someone who's a fan of the character actually and who understands the character actually writing it and crazy enough, directing it and being Batman. That's freaky and awesome at the same time. Yeah, I mean, look, when you build yourself your own bad cave, like, let's say you guys are out with the beautiful, <coughs> mysterious woman, or Ashley, you're out with a young man, and he says, hey, let me take you back to my bat cave. <laughs> Is that a turn on or is that something where you're like, I need to get away from here immediately? Ashley's probably running <laughs> for the door. <laughs> Don't come to me first. You guys answer. Huh. <laughs> if it was Batwoman and she was like, I got a bat cave, I'd be like, where, oh, well, that where is it? Different. Yeah, let's That's, check it out. Yeah, okay. well, <laughs> if it's a Batwoman, yeah. I am running for the hills the other on, direction. Man. Little gothy, little awesome right there. Yeah, no thanks. I get my fill. Um, uh, okay, well, what is our next story? <laughs> Sony Pictures brought out the big guns at CinemaCon in Las Vegas last night, officially announcing the title for the rebooted Spider-Man. As was reported last week, the title is officially Spider-Man Homecoming. And in a report hours earlier from Birth Movie Death, Devin Faraci claims to have inside knowledge that Marvel will be looking at the character of Vulture to give Tom Holland's Spider-Man a run for his money. In the same report, Faraci confirmed the title for the movie was Spider-Man Homecoming, beating Sony to the announcement. So it's anyone's guess now if his report about Vulture as the villain is also true. Marvel has yet to 
confirm or deny this report. Dennis, what are your thoughts on Spider-Man's new title and Vulture as a rumored villain? I don't like the title. Uh, we discussed this uh, a few a week ago, maybe, when they speculated and it ended up being true. Yeah, I know people were pointing out, look, oh, it has a double meaning. It's about him coming back to Marvel. Yeah, that's great, but most of the casual fans don't won't know and won't care. They they think all the, the Marvel <coughs> movies, Fox, Sony, they're all the same thing, you know. So they, they don't really care. Uh, in the t the logo itself, it actually kind of looks like a '90s cartoon yeah. to me. Like it doesn't look like a, a feature, big budget feature film. As far as Vulture is concerned. Not my first pick, but I think they wanted to go with something different. Uh, that, that being said, I love Spider-Man in Civil War. I have high hopes for him. I think the movie's going to be great because especially Ky Kevin Feige just came out and said, oh, yeah, Marvel's the creative producers. Basically saying, oh, yeah, we're going to handle everything. So We'll put Sony's name on it, but we're going to handle a lot of the stuff. So I'm still excited for the movie, not sold on its title. You saw Civil War? I didn't know yeah, that movie. Yeah. Was, that was, yeah. Wait, wait, I saw That's, Civil War too. You didn't see it? No. Uh, I must have missed something, oh. but uh, since you saw the movie too, why don't you talk about Spider-Man? Was he good in that movie, and are you excited for the title Homecoming? Spider-Man was so fantastic and spectacular in Captain uh, America Civil War. There. Whoa, uh, Weber, what? Um, <laughs> you know what? I, I, they could have a corny title like Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm still excited about the movie. I'm not a big fan of the of the title. You know what, Vulture? What, maybe he could be in high school, and it's his teacher. He's like, I'm creating weird Vulture wings. Probably not as corny as that. So <laughs> let's just know that it's not going to be that. Are you auditioning I, to play the Vulture right now? <laughs> hey, hello there, Peter Parker. Help me put these wings on. That's how the Vulture sounds in my mind. Hello. Um, if you read the character description <laughs> for the Vulture, he's not too far off from something a Schnepp could play. I mean, look, he's this brilliant scientist. He got screwed over. I, I think I think the money guy screwed him over, but he had built this flight harness and the flight harness not only enabled him to be able to fly all around this was created in like the early 60s by yep. stan lee by the way they, it also gave him superhuman strength so totally mirrors my life story i did yeah. build a flight harness and, totally and does the vulture over. hang out the old folks home and that's where <laughs> schnepp is going to be hanging yeah, out i'm going to be well. hanging out at the old folks home in about two or three years geriatrics me and we'll be playing yahtzee ashley will come and visit me she said she yeah, promised I'll read you she'd a come story. and visit me anyway homecoming <laughs> i'm not sold on the title but i love that they are doing this Spider-Man movie with the new, brand new Spider-Man that's introduced in Civil War. When you guys see it, you will love this new Spider-Man. And any any worries that you have about Homecoming or whatever the title's called Prom. will be yeah, it'll be washed away. <laughs> it's like Batman. If it, the new Batman is called Batman of Special Thanksgiving. You'd be like, what the hell? What is that? You know, you still go weird. watch it, you'd but you'd be like, it. "What the hell is that?" What's title? with the title? I'm sure they're tying this title in in multiple ways, not just that he's back at Marvel, but maybe it does have like, you know, you know, it's, he's got to ask a girl out for a date to the dance, or there's like, this could be a whole bunch of different things that are are worked into that title. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a better title than like Spider Man Winter Formal or Spider Man Ring Dance <laughs> or Spider Man <laughs> the Sadie Hawkins Predicament, but yeah. I want to hate this title more than I do because I really don't. I think one of the things is that when we talked about this. Story, Story last week at our pre-production meeting, Mark <laughs> Riley brought up that hey, they they also bought a bunch of other domain names yeah. that were even worse than Spider-Man Homecoming. So you know, just by by weighing them against the other awful names, Spider-Man right. Homecoming doesn't sound as bad. I, is it a little uh, maybe cheesy to be putting it? Oh, I get it. He's coming back to Marvel and it's high school and they have the big Homecoming thing. Okay, cool. We understand yeah. what you're Spidey talking about. In the o there. It, yeah. yeah, but it also it speaks to that character and who he probably is in high school, where he is it may be a little bit of an awkward kid. He's very quick with jokes. He's he's it might be shy when he's around girls. So there's a lot of elements of Spider-Man that make sense with this title. I don't love it. I also don't hate it. And I think you guys are are dead on when you're saying, like, look, you can name this thing anything. And we would be very excited to see Spider-Man if we all love him in Civil War as much as these guys who already got to see the movie. The rest of us, when we see it next month, if we love him as much, we're going to love this, hopefully, this standalone Spider-Man oh, by, by the way, Mark, you know that our, our non-spoilers review of Captain America Civil War is coming out at 2 p.m. Pacific today. Well, that's yeah. why the embargo is lifted. So if you want to check out all the people like me and Dennis who saw the film and our opinions, but non-spoiler related, you could see it at 2 o'clock. Yeah. I think, Ellis, are you going to watch it? Our, our non-spoiler uh, And now it's time for Buy or Sell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Go check that out on Collider's channel. It'll be up later today. Buy or Sell is that point in the show when Ashley gives us a topic. We simply let her know whether we buy it or sell it. Then we defend our argument to the very death. 
All right. Sony didn't stop with their title announcement for Spider-Man in the same presentation. The studio also confirmed the 21 Jump Street Men in Black crossover with the title being announced as MIB 23. Muppets Helmer James Bobbin is rumored to be in talks to direct with Phil, with Phil Ward and Chris Miller on board as producers. Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones are not returning for MIB 23, so the film will pretty much act as a sequel to 22 Jump Street and as a reboot for the Men in Black franchise. Mark, buy or sell the MIB 23 title from Sony. I, I buy it, and I feel like I need to open this with saying, like, I, I, I know everybody wants to hate this idea. I, I don't. I think this could be so ripe for comedy. Clearly, that title, it's already spoofing it mm -hmm. in such a weird way. It almost feels like The Naked Gun 2 and a half or oh. 33 and a third, and that's what this movie's going to be. I, I think that the Men in Black franchise was dead on arrival with that awful third movie, so anything that you can use to inject some freshness into that is fine. And really, where were you going to go with 23 Jump Street because we already saw two really funny movies with them. Are you just going to keep going in that direction like how they spoofed in the, the, the closing credits of 22 Jump Street? This makes sense. And guess what? If this movie sucks and it's a total train wreck, we never, we can retcon it. It's not like this is canon all of a sudden. Right. Like We can get rid of the men in black for 24 Jump Street and we can just bring back Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum and they can make fun of how bad that movie was. <laughs> this is a this is a win-win proposition in my mind. So calling it men in black 20 I think it makes sense to get some people talking, right, Dennis? Uh, I'm going to have to sell this title. <laughs> it's a it's a terrible title because MIB 23, when you, you hear 23, it doesn't tell you that it's Jump Street. It should be called MIB Jump Street because 23, you just think, oh, this is, is this the 23rd uh, Men in Black movie? And then also with the Men in Black franchise, like it's lost its luster. Like people don't care about it anymore. 21, 22 Jump Street are the ones that people love now, so you got to put that name in there. I don't hate the concept uh, like you, but I just think that the title should have been something better. I mean, well, let's also think about it in this way, though. Once you see it on a poster and you see Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill on the poster and it says Men in Black, 23 you're gonna put the pieces together and if you're not it's gonna be kind of i think it's a, like a funny puzzle like oh wait they made 20 wait wait but those guys oh i think i get it schnapp who you whose side do you take i buy it i absolutely love it it's such a weird a melding of both of them you're right men in black three sucked it arrived dead on arrival they should have called it mib doa is what it should have been <laughs> subtitled what a horrible film oh i hate but, that movie yeah, so much i didn't even see the end i walked out it oh it gets walk worse yeah, it gets worse walk away film um so yeah, and, and 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, fantastic. Now we're at 23 Jump Street MIB. So just to flip it around and call it MIB 23, it I love it. I love it's it's it is kind of like you're right. They're not straight up saying it's a sequel Jump Street and Men in Black, but I like that they're just saying, look, it's a combination of both these worlds, and you're gonna kind of guess that Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill are both asked to be Men in Black, and there's gonna be a brand new person who's training them. And that's kind of it's you're right it's going to have that naked gun flavor i hope it's got all of those elements to it i loved i both of those jump street movies are incredibly fun and really funny so to see that merged with a dead uh you franchise. Know, franchise it's gonna it's gonna you know they're pumping that back to life you know with some much needed comedy so mib 23 just the title alone makes me love it yeah i mean look i think in this day and age particularly with fans of of genre and like you know fantasy movies comic book movies we always want to take everything so seriously and oh is this official canon is this going to count in the future this is not like throwing batman and spider-man in a star wars movie right. and like oh what's this going to mean for the skywalkers like this is an <laughs> experiment guys just enjoy that this can happen in this day and age that we can take a franchise that was very very promising and really had a bad end versus this new one that's really funny and we enjoy it. So let's mash them up, see what happens. It may be the worst movie that comes out that year and that's going to be totally fine because we can always go back and just get rid of it and flush it down the toilet like the third that it is. <laughs> it's impossible that it'll be the worst movie of whatever year it comes out. It's, it's impossible? It's impossible. Is there I'm calling it right Norm now. The North no, there's just no out? way that it could be the worst. <laughs> There's always something worse. It's, I don't know, man. Unless they make <laughs> Hot Pursuit 2. You never oh, man. know. Spicy, Spicy Larry, Larry baby. <laughs> Comment on this story. What do you guys think? Do you guys like this? I did. Wait, what's the better title? Is it MIB 23 or is it Spider Man Homecoming or do you just hate both? Comment in the live chat and on YouTube after the fact as you wish. Ashley, what's our next buy or sell? 
Production on Thor Ragnarok begins this June in Australia, and Marvel Studios continues to add more talent to the movie. THR is now reporting that Creed's Tessa Thompson has landed a key role in the Marvel sequel. In the same report, THR also dropped news that Natalie Portman is apparently not returning for the movie, giving no other reasons as to why. Many other outlets are now speculating that Thompson's part will be as a love interest for Chris Hemsworth. Thor- Chris Hemsworth's. Thor character. Shanette Byersall, Tessa Thompson joining Thor Ragnarok. Chris Hemsworth? Chris Thor. Hemsworth's Thor, <laughs> Thor character. Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth's worth to me <laughs> is in gold bullions, <laughs> soup style. Um, Tessa Thompson, I totally buy her as an actress. She's great. She's one of the reasons I liked Creed because it's like I actually believed her and Adonis's uh, budding love. And it was really fun to see their interaction in the film. And uh, she's an up-and-coming great actress, so why not be in a superhero film? Her agents are smart. They're like, get in one of these things, and they she, they got her in something that I think has a lot of promise. Thor and Hulk doing the Bing Crosby, uh, you know, Bob Hope, you know, singing out, you know. I think they're going to be singing on some weird alien camel, and she might be <laughs> on a third one, like a weird turtle creature, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it sounds great. Uh, you know, Jarella. Actually, thank you guys. Yesterday I asked on Hero, I was like, or it was actually on Movie Talk, I was like, what was the, the Hulk's girlfriend's name from the 80s? And a lot of you uh, responded and told, because I couldn't remember, Jarella was her name, and I think she's playing Jarella. Oh, uh, I would have gone with either Tiffany or Debbie. <laughs> Big names in the 80s. Uh, Ashley did, as she frequently does. She actually is just trying to sell us two things under the table, even though it appears mm-hmm. as just one. Right. And I buy both of them. I buy Tessa Thompson in Thor Ragnarok, and I buy if she is going to just be replacing Natalie Portman. Oh, right, Natalie Portman. I'm totally cool with that. Like, like I think Natalie Portman is a fantastic actress. Yes, I've seen the prequels. I still think she's a great actress in things like Black Swan. I just don't know that she cares about Thor at all. That If she wants out, fine. We don't need you. If you don't want to be in a Marvel movie, you don't want to be part of this huge cinematic universe we'll find somebody else and tessa thompson if she's playing that role i think that's a huge credit to the movie because like you said Schnepp, she's great in creed and i don't need a huge backstory i don't need a oh no what happened to natalie portman's character she die and now thor met somebody else you can just swap them i'm gonna be totally cool with that how about you Dennis? yeah i'm totally buying it she's tessa thompson's been coming up lately where where she kind of blew up from creed but she's been around for a little while she was in veronica mars season two she was in selma for a little bit she was in a movie called dear white people but but being in creed kind of got her on, on the map and now she's getting into movies like this. I do hope that she is a, a love interest for, for Thor and Chris Hemsworth char- character because she's she's beautiful and also with, with Natalie Portman yeah, she didn't care. Not only that there was not really a big chemistry between her and Chris Hemsworth. They, they kind of just threw it like, oh, she's hot, he's hot put them together. They're <laughs> obviously in love, right? Mm-hmm. But but really they didn't sell us on, on that relationship. So her leaving doesn't really make any of anything of consequence. See, I'm I'm saying she's not going to be Chris oh, okay. Hemsworth's girlfriend. I'm saying she's going to be Hulk's, Hulk's girlfriend. Bruce Banner's girlfriend. Okay. This might just get I'm guessing that they're going to be on some different alien planet and she's going to play this character Jarella. That's just a hunch and Thor is going to be with Sif. Or they're going to introduce some something that happened with Jane Foster where he's going to be bumming out or something. But he's not going to just be like hooking up with Tessa Thompson. God, that sounds Bruce dangerous. Bruce Banner is on that. To be to be the Hulk's girlfriend sounds very, very <laughs> trepidatious. Oh, yeah. if you will. Like, because when his heart rate gets up, does it matter whether he's mad or whether he's happy? Like if he's really excited, say, or whether he's really pissed off What are you trying to way? hint out there, <laughs> Ellis? Just saying, like, like if your husband comes home and he's like, hey, honey, I thought about a romantic evening just the two of us. But he's wearing purple pants. You better get the <laughs> hell out of there. <laughs> Ashley, what's our last buy or sell? The latest project from Shane Black, The Nice Guys, has released another trailer prepping audiences for the May release. The latest TV spot shows us a hotline number that allows you to hear Gosling and Crow pitch themselves as private investigators, with the spot offering quick glimpses of new footage from the movie. The Nice Guys also stars on Gary Rice, Matt Bomer, Margaret Qualley, Keith David, and Kim Basinger, and comes to theaters this May 20th. Dennis Byers saw the new TV spot for The Nice Guys. I buy it. It's something cool. It's something new, you know, doing that different angle for it. Mm-hmm. The only thing about it is I don't know if it's going to grab any new viewers or, or anyone get anyone to the theater. The people that are already interested in this movie and like it, I think it, it's cool for them. But I, I don't know if like the casual movie fan is going to look at this and go, oh, I got to go see that new movie. I do like that that bit at the end with the, the tie and the, the tie trick. Yeah. yeah. 
I yeah, I, I love watching this too. It's thirty seconds long. It's a it's a nice breezy thing. It's just another one of these marketing tools that has sold me on a movie that I'm already very excited about seeing. And I'm gonna call the number. I'm gonna because yeah. there's a number. So call snap, that go number. Give me your thoughts. I I, I once ringing. again I buy the Are trailer as well. I think the nice guys. I can't wait to see it. Shane Black is so far. It's Russell Crowe. Hey, Russell. Russell, sorry. Don't throw your phone. I got to go. Dude, so you actually hear That's Russell awesome. Crowe's voice. Sorry to cut you can off. He sings, can he sing us some lines from Les Mis? And oh, I don't think, I don't I think, think anybody needs that. You calling that, that number, you're charged four ninety nine, right? No, it's, it's, I think it's a 1-800 number. But yeah, you know, it's a, it's a fun marketing tool. You're right. I don't know if it's going to, you're right, Dennis. I don't know if it's going to attract new people because they might be like, what is this? Should I call it? It might get dumb people and they just end up calling that number. And they're like, this sounds like Russell Crowe. Just so, call Mark Ellis dumb. Hey. <laughs> We know that I'm, Mark Ellis is a, he's a, he's a lot smarter he than he looks, ladies and gentlemen. He's on the but TV. I yeah. buy this trailer. That's all I can say. I yeah, can't wait. This, to, when is this coming out, by the way? Uh, it's, it comes out in May. I think it's like May 20th or something uh, like that. So right. it's it's very, very soon. It's it's in May. So I'll probably see Civil War finally, then maybe see the nice guys before you. And I won't be so nice when I brag <laughs> to you. Uh, now it is time for Rewind, everybody. We love doing this on Hump Day because we talk about the movies that came out 10 years ago and then 20 years ago on on this very week. So, Ashley, let's take a walk down memory lane. When 20 oh years ago, God. Kobe Bryant was actually drafted. Oh, 96. Yep. Wow, look nice. at you with your knowledge. I'm a huge Kobe fan. I just think like you an 82 just game so send off, before say this. farewell tour is a little ridiculous. Oh, well, you know. All right, 10 <laughs> years ago, Harry, hater, hater. 10 years ago, <laughs> Scary Movie 4, Kinky Boots, and Hard Candy. And 20 years ago, Fear, James and the Giant Peach, and Jane Eyre? Jane Eyre? Jane Eyre. Yeah. Jane Eyre. Yeah. Yeah, just Jane Eyre. That's Jane how. Eyre. That, that's how she likes to go. Why? Did, why doesn't she just spell it A I R? Uh, you're gonna have to ask. Uh, what's her? Whoever wrote the book about it. Uh, I, I, my mom's gonna be mad at me that I can't remember her name. Uh, it's James and the Giant's Peach. I never saw. I, I literally have not seen any of these movies. I don't know what it was about this time frame in my life, both in '96 and 2006. I have not seen any of these movies. Schnepp, if you had to pick one movie for me to see from this list, what do you got? Hard Candy. Yes. It's uh It's an incredible, amazing film thriller that introduces two incredible actors who a lot of people didn't know um what is it ellen page ellen page thank you and the um a night owl what's his name oh uh, um wilson patrick wilson thank you patrick wilson sorry i stuttered on both the names these amazing stars <laughs> that i can't immediately call up <laughs> to prove to you that it's worth it no but it really is it's a really fantastic film and it's really frightening in a lot of ways, and it's, it flips you a, lo a lot of ways. It's like literally almost a two-person movie. There's only two actors, a few other additional actors, but I would see it as a really tense, taut thriller. So that's the one I would recommend. Second re recommendation would be James and the Giant Peach. It's really fun. It's a fun stop-motion animated film. Uh, the design work is incredible. It's the guy who, di who directed uh, uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas. It's Henry Selleck, so this is his first standalone film that he really had a lot more control over. Um, so it's a lot of the design work is beautiful, so I would recommend both of those films. All right, Dennis, you got some kinky boots on? No, uh, I actually <laughs> haven't seen that movie, and I haven't seen, the only one I saw was James and the Giant Peach, and I enjoyed it. It was cool stop uh, motion animation. Um, and then Scary Movie 4, I didn't see it because Scary Movie 3 sucks so bad. <laughs> I, I saw the first two and I actually right. liked them. And then I saw the third one. I was like, this is terrible. So that, that's why I didn't see that. Hard Candy is one that people, yeah, have been talking about. I haven't seen it yet, but it, it, everyone says it's great. And it, I think, it, is it on Netflix or Amazon? It or is right like now, yeah. It, it's, it's on one of those two. It's just uh, if you look it up, it's on one of those two. But uh, if you haven't seen Hideous Kinky, I would see that instead of Kinky Boots. Hideous Kinky stars Kate Winslet. That's all I could say about that. That's something called Kinky. <laughs> well, there's a lot actually you can say about something called Kinky. Uh, Fear, the movie, is that the movie where, because it was not the movie that Mark Wahlberg was like, oh, hey guys, I'm ready to be a movie star. It was still like Marky Mark is yes. being really creepy, stalking Reese Witherspoon, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then he started to break out in roles from that. Yeah. But Fear itself was not necessarily, I think some people like it. It's like a good right. kind of suspense thriller, maybe a little dated now but uh yeah. hey you get to see a younger mark Wahlberg. he probably looks exactly the same going after reese witherspoon so who wouldn't <laughs> want to check that out early the early Wahlberg years actually yeah. have you seen any of these movies and do you own a pair of kinky boots um i do not own a pair of well you know for one halloween i had a pair of kinky boots um <laughs> i have seen hard candy which was definitely my favorite out of the bunch and 
I might have seen Scary Movie Four, but wasn't very good. Yeah, Hard Candy out of all of them. Yeah, you'd really recommend good. Hard Candy. Yeah, right? wasn't it about? It was about like a girl. She met this guy offline, but then like yeah, he was gonna like don't, do. Don't, don't okay. say anything. Okay, yeah, okay, you gotta see it. You gotta see it. It's really, awesome. really good. All right. Well, this week, if you want to go down memory lane, either suck on some hard candy or eat a peach. Uh, before we get to mailbag, we want to let you guys know, as Dennis alluded to, there's a great interview that Dennis conducted on the channel right now with the Russo brothers. They directed the movie, I haven't seen yet, Civil War, and we're gonna toss to a quick clip of that right now. Take it away. When I first saw the trailers and I saw, one of the thing, concerns I had was I, I saw the airport scene, the, the battle between uh, Team Cap and Team Iron Man. And I looked at it and I was like, can this live up to, to the comic book? I, I'm not sure from what I've seen from the trailers. I saw it. I was I saw the movie. I was totally wrong. Oh, it's it, so good. It, yeah, yeah. It, it's one of my it's my favorite scene in the movie. It's one of my favorite scenes in any comic book movie uh, ever. Um, did you guys purposely kind of hold back and showing showing what was in the trailer in that scene? Oh, without question. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot that happens in that scene that you know. Again, we're fans ourselves, so we know like the joy you have that when you go to the movie and the element of surprise and discovery, and it's like we never want to compromise that. While it's while we also love the run up and the anticipation for a movie, like we participate that in that as everybody else does. It's like yeah, you just you have to save the right thing. So yeah, that sequence was very difficult finding the right parts of that scene to just present as a tease to the audience of what's coming in the movie. But that sequence was massively important to us. The second we decided to go down the road of Civil War for Captain America's next movie, we knew that that scene, that sequence, would be the centerpiece of the movie. And everybody on the team knew it. You know, Our writers, Marcus and McFeely, knew it. The producers knew it. Our stunt team knew it. Our visual effects team knew it. Everybody who's invested in sort of making that sequence live and breathe and and be wonderful is like knew the stakes of that sequence. So we spent months and months and months with our team, you know, sort of uh, doing different runs through what, what that sequence can be, what each little piece of that sequence could be, thinking about on a character level, how do we complicate that sequence as much as we can and let character lead us through the sequence on a surprise level. Um, so it was, a, it, was a, it was almost like making a mini movie within the movie, that sequence. With, with Captain America Winter Soldier, that was kind of a game changer for the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and now you have Captain America Civil War, also another game changer. Do you guys feel that, you know, in the beginning of the MCU, obviously we started off with the solo Iron Man movie, and he's kind of been... The, the main guy. Do you feel like there's been a shift or maybe even a co-lynch uh, point for, for the MCU now with Captain America as a character? Uh, a bit. I mean, I think that, you know, we, we like to consider Winter Soldier, Civil War, and the Infinity War movies uh, as having an overarching storyline. And I do think that, yes, because we are working in that point of view and just 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 how he is as you say, has uh, has sort of you know taken on a, a you know a major uh, uh, um, or given us major direction in the Marvel universe. He's certainly going to become a you know a very important character moving forward, uh, as is the co patriarch of the Avengers, Tony Stark. Yeah. Uh, so uh, certainly, Civil War isn't over. Uh, the you know the whole the whole question moving forward for these characters will be: Can they repair their relationship? Should they repair their relationship? Some pretty awful, irrevocable seem, uh, things seem to have happened in this film. Uh, so it'll be fascinating to uh, to see where they go. And is that something you guys are going to delve into? Or I know you guys are still breaking story into the first part of Infinity War. Is yeah, certainly, yeah. without question, it'll carry over. Okay. You know, the next time I think you will see all these characters on screen is in Infinity War. Okay. The end. Of, the end of this movie very much sets the stage for Infinity War in our minds. Yeah. They are some of the coolest guys you will ever meet. And yes, I'm including Dennis Zhang in that category. <laughs> you can check out the full interview on Collider Video's YouTube channel, where you are right now. And don't forget the Civil War spoiler-free review is going to be up later on today, definitely not featuring me. Now let's move on to Mailbag. This is a segment of the show where you guys write in, you send us your emails, and Ashley reads a couple of them live on the air. If you want to get your email read, just hit us up at collidervideo at gmail.com. And at the end of the show, we're going to save some time for your live Twitter questions. Shoot us a tweet at Collider Video. Ashley is the gatekeeper. So I would say maybe say nice things about Kobe's career. <laughs> that might get you ahead 
in the contest. Ashley, what's our first mailbag? Mark Devlin writes, Sup guys, what are some movies that you had literally no intention in seeing or just weren't bothered at all that you thought were actually really good once you eventually saw them? Cheers, love from Scotland. I always go back to a movie that like nobody's ever heard of to this day that I sometimes you get you get treated when you you go to a press screening and it's such a small movie. Like I didn't do any research before I went in, which is usually the case, and I had no idea what this movie was about. And it's so rare to be in a theater and the movie comes on and you see the opening credits and you're like, I have no idea what this movie is. All I knew is that the movie was called Puncture and it starred Chris Evans. Mm. And I was like, all right, let's check this out. It's awesome. It's a movie that totally took me by surprise. It had a very limited release. I don't know what the critical reception was. I don't know that a lot of critics saw it, but it's a really good movie, and it shows that Chris Evans can do a lot more than just be Captain America. I highly recommend checking that one out. Dennis, how about you? Uh, for me, it would be uh, Paddington. Uh, it came Ooh, out, what, good. last year? Yeah. I remember seeing the trailers, and I did not like it at all. I, I If you followed me, I've always talked about how Whenever they do that kind of mix of live action and CG characters like a Garfield or a or a, <laughs> ch- was a, the Chipmunks thing right. the, and Smurf, they cr- they creep me out. And so Paddington was there, and I was like, oh, I don't know. They had that toothbrush sequence. I was like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> and then I went to go see it, and I loved it. Yeah. And I was I was pleasantly surprised. I think a lot of people had that reaction to Paddington, where it's like you're walking out of the theater, and you're like, w- w- do we get another one? Yeah. And yes, we do get another Are one. Are they doing another Paddington? They are doing another Paddington. I was in the same boat with you. It's like I, I hated that trailer. It was like it, it, not as disturbed as you were. I like the way how, <laughs> yeah. how, how oh, yeah. Oh, I like actually creeped how creeped me out. out. I enjoy oh. your creeped out oh. in this, though. That is had nightmares like, about Paddington the bear and the Heads toothbrush yeah. and yeah it's like oh, just it brushing its teeth it's it made oh. me ill i like that though it never made me Ill. i just didn't like the trailer like, it just felt forced like him going down the stairs i was like oh it's another one of those big loud stupid family films yeah. that i'll hate and i was so wrong it was a very lovable really well done film but that's not my pick my pick is going to be i usually don't go into films i don't want to see i just like i did want to see paddington but i didn't expect it to be that good but uh district nine was one of those films that i remember seeing a trailer for it and i was like all right, I'll, I'll put a chance on that. I'll try that out. I also, like, even earlier, Blade was one of those films that it was sort of like, I was like, that's ah, probably going to suck, but I'll go see it. And was like, wow, that was so much fun. Unexpected. Like, Wesley Snipes, like, just from the weird blood scene at the very beginning all the way to the end, it was... It was just unexpected. Nowadays, you watch Blade, you'd be like, well, what's so, what's so special about it? Because we've been inundated for like 17 years since then with incredible superhero films. But that really was one of the first superhero films. Even before X-Men, I believe. Yeah, it was, yeah, like, yeah this I'm came out in 99. I'm not Blade with launching the superhero craze that we have today. I think that was much more X-Men. But Blade did yeah. come out before X-Men. Yeah. And in the late 90s, if you give me Wesley Slipes and a Snord, I'm going to see that movie opening weekend. Did, did I say Snord? snord? I, I think like, I said Snord. It's a Dr. Seuss word, guys. Yeah, yeah Snord. It's an <laughs> Elephant with a giant metal like, blade. Like when Harloff it's, call a, yeah. a lightsaber, he's a, that, that light sword thing. Yeah, that light, light, light sword thingy. Yeah. It's an elephant with a lightsaber yeah. trunk. Snored. Yeah. That actually would be awesome. Like yeah. an army of elephants yeah, but marching. It's, it's they all really had quick snorts. and agile. Yeah. can jump around. Yeah. yeah, the vulture, dude. He can I create see, a I see lot the poster of cool now. stuff. <laughs> create What's the snored for us. Like? Darren writes, my fiance and I got into a heated discussion last night about the Jungle Book and how it needs the human element to work. Her argument being that it's if it's just a bunch of talking animals, it becomes less believable and a little hokey. Mine being, I would love to see a remake of The Lion King with the CGI quality of the Jungle Book. It doesn't have a human element and I don't think it needs it. Do you guys slash girl think a photorealistic cartoon remake of a movie would be a good idea? Does it need the human element to be successful? Darren, I'm going to tell you something is that I will agree with your take over your fiance, but do not come barging in and say, hey, look, see, honey, I'm right. All the everybody Mark Ellis told me I was yeah. right. Do not agree. This is a fight you cannot win. OK, you you have to pretend like she's right. But I'm going to tell you under the table. Yes, you can totally do it in today's day and age. Once you all see the Jungle Book, you're going to be like, yeah, I want to see the Lion King done like this. Like I thought the kid that played Mowgli was fine for what he was doing. But there's scenes in there when I don't need Mowgli. I can just have the wolves talking amongst himself and the council. I can watch the adventures of Sher Khan running around, see what animals he's, you know, getting into trouble with. You can see the I can see a whole movie about Ka the Snake. That's how great the Jungle <laughs> Book is. So I would love to see more adventures done like that. And you don't necessarily need people, right, Dennis? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, we watch a lot of these Pixar animated films that don't have a human component and they work fine. And the only thing I my concern is, you know, watching the Jungle Book and if they did a Lion King live action is is the violence because the cgi is so realistic 
I think it's scary for little kids. Even mm -hmm. they're in the Jungle Book, I yeah. thought so. But I do love this question because I like that he had a heated discussion with his with his fiance. Like I, I just picture them in their in their <laughs> kitchen. Just she's like throwing dishes. No, yeah. they can't make a Lion King. Yeah. They can't make it. That'd and he's like, no, they can't. Yeah. It's not a, It's a full on blown out like fight yeah. argument. Yeah. Uh, hey, let me save your future marriage. Yeah. I'm gonna agree. Wedding's with, off, Darren. I'm agreeing with both you. and and your fiance because you're both right. I think after seeing the Jungle Book, I'd love to see an all animated CGI with little cute wolves talking like, mommy, what's happening? It's like super freaky, so like unbelievably cute. You're angry at your pets when you come home. Like, how come you can't talk like these animals in the movie? <laughs> you're but angry at your within, pets. <laughs> within the same sentence though, I have to agree with your wife. You can't, you can't have a human that's CG. We haven't broken that uncanny valley is what it's called yet. When you see a CGI person, in a movie, you could tell they're fake. Even though they're very realistic, we still haven't been able to master no. the human CGI actor yet. So that's not there. So I agree with both of you. If you have a human interacting, shoot them for real, like they did in Jungle Book. But if you have all animals, like Dennis pointed out, Pixar has been doing all fake stuff and no one's had any problems with it. We're at that point now where we can actually make animals look real it's freaky so then they can talk and you're like i'm watching these animals have a fond conversation and i'm not looking at their mouths move in a weird way i'm not thrown out of the movie i'm just watching it now and accepting it so you're both right that's a very good answer. I'm sure when Rudyard Kipling wrote The Jungle Book, he's like, I hope this causes a domestic dispute <laughs> one day that ends with Darren sleeping on the couch. Ashley, what's our next? Uh, oh, are we, are, is it Twitter time? Live. It's, it's Twitter, Twitter time. Twitter. I can't wait to see what you guys are tweeting yeah. about. Ashley, what's the first Twitter topic today? So much Kobe talk going on. It really warms my heart. The okay, guy's first, are great. He's an all-time great player. I'm glad that you admit this now. All right. The first question comes from Mantis E, and he writes, 24 Kobe forever. Question, best <laughs> sports movie. Ooh, the best sports movie of all time I uh, you know it, it's hard for me to take any movie that's not Rocky even though I, as far as rewatchability goes I think Rocky 4 is the most rewatchable of all of them because that single-handedly ended the Cold War study your history kids uh, in in football it gets a little bit tougher I think I would say Rudy is my favorite football movie of I all got time. longest yard with Burt Reynolds the original longest yard where they're in prison and they have to fight the prison guards it's, watch it it's, it's a amazing. great movie it's got a lot of elements of comedy in there whereas rudy more like tugs on the heartstrings mm -hmm. and rudy by no means is a documentary so don't take it as fact even though i know all the real stuff the real story of rudy and it's not ne necessarily that golden that movie i just get thrown into another world so rudy is way up there for me how about you dennis uh the first major league was was a classic it's hilarious uh then also if you count uh, Warrior, because it's about uh, MMA, I, I love that movie. And I think that is is a vastly underrated film. And then obviously the Rocky movie. I'm chucking in Bad News Bears, the original one, with young Rorschach and uh, Walter Matthau. Come on, man. That's really good. If you look at baseball movies, I think that's way up there. Field of Dreams, Bull Durham. But the sneaky one that people tend to forget about sometimes is The Sandlot. It is an all-time classic <laughs> Sports movie. Another great one, Eight Men Out. John Sales did that about the White Sox, and that's a great, great. It's a it's about baseball, but it's also about like betting and all this. That's right. Under the involving you know. Shoeless Joe, he oh, was yeah. never allowed back into baseball, which is why we got Field of Dreams, right. and he went to this magical cornfield in Iowa to play baseball. You're talking about basketball. White men can't jump over Hoosiers. Just oh yeah, slightly white man can't jump. Me. See now, me and Ellis can talk sports. We're talking sports. We're talking this is sports, fun, right? This What's is going some, on? some weird astral plane so that we're living weird. in, where John Schnepp is a huge sports fan. It's kind of fun to be here. <laughs> <Yeah>. Movie sports fan. <laughs> What's our next tweet? Jesus Galindo writes, can fans see early screenings of movies or is it only for critics and celebrities? No, fans can totally see early screenings of movies and there, there's a number of ways to do it. I'm sure you can go online and search for one in your area, but a lot of times if you're leaving a movie theater, we see it all the time, whether it's at the AMC mm -hmm. Century City or the Burbank one, you just have people outside and they have notebooks. And they're like, hey, do you want to see a free movie? Sometimes it's like six months before the movie comes out. Yeah. They're doing test screenings. So if, if you put the effort in, there's a lot of ways to see fan screenings. Dennis, do you know of any particular way you can get to see a movie early? Yeah, I think that's the main way because I used to do that back in my unemployed days. Uh, <laughs> uh, I saw, yeah, certain ones. I remember I saw Gravity that a year before it was done 
and like they had the previs effects you know gravity is all visual effects so they had a lot of the previs stuff in there but yeah i think that's the main way it's like they also have contests sometimes to see movies early for mm-hmm. like radio stations have them or there's certain promotions if yeah if you go online there's all plenty of places that kind of tell you but you have to be willing to invest a lot of time you seeing a movie early in, under those circumstances they ask you to show up like two or three hours early mm-hmm. you got to wait in line you're not guaranteed and then the movie doesn't start it's like a four or five hour then you gotta like, fill thing. out a thing yeah fill out a form and all that stuff it's it takes a lot of time yeah, I, it, it, yeah. it's kind of like being a studio audience member the price is right where it looks like so much fun on tv and then you actually get to cbs and it's like literally 38 mm. hours of waiting with no food in a 60 degree room no water you get one little dixie cup <laughs> of fluid for a day and then they're like oh now be really zany on camera for an hour it's horrible it's a yeah. little rough I, I would suggest going to movietickets.com i think there's one, uh, one of those places where you can act they'll actually send you notices when hey you know rsvp for this movie they usually don't tell you what the film is but if you go to like say you go to when any of these uh amc's that are the larger uh you know like the burbank one what's the other one you mentioned dennis the century city one century a good city one, yeah. they have a lot of people standing outside with those flyers and they'll tell you oh it's starring vince Vaughn. like i had to re- re- turn down like a few months ago the king arthur one mm-hmm. the um that oh, just really? got that just got pushed back for reshoots and stuff they did a test screening of that and i was like i want to see that is that the guy ritchie one? yeah the guy ritchie when they test screened it like five months ago and they were like handing out the flyers and i was like i can't go i'm gonna get jacked because i mean get, you're gonna get jacked you're gonna get robbed no 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 they just recognize you and pull you out you know? oh they yeah. because you're yeah. john schnapp well no because uh, they, the vulture if, well yeah <laughs> you know i'll be like wait I'm, fl- I'm just floating above them i've seen the movie wait, now would they not let you in because you're press or because you're the guy that might spill a gallon of iced tea and not yeah. i think it's <laughs> i think run out <laughs> i think it's both it could be both now but it's because you know they'll say you're press so right, if, you, if, so. you are, if you're press they will kick you out so yeah. um i did get lucky i got to see the mad max fury road one using those same tickets holly got them um, and I just put on a cap and I like went, you know, I tried to shrink down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like, whatever. It's like, if you're press, you can't go do that stuff anymore. But if you're, if you, that movie tickets.com is the best way to do it. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot easier in the age of social media to be able to do this. You're going to have to wait in line for a little bit. And if that doesn't work out, give me a call, bring 10 bucks to my place and we'll watch screening room mm-hmm. opening night. Mark, Ashley, yeah, well, what's it, our man. next tweet? Rob Cartall writes, <laughs> getting a bit dark. If you were to die, which movie death would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this yeah. question. Um, I've always said the way I want to go, and there isn't even a second place. This is how I want to die: is Great White Shark Attack. Uh, oh that's the because nobody can ever say like, "Oh man, Mark went out like it was so lame the way he died, getting mauled to death by the greatest creature on earth." I want to get killed by a great white shark. That is my goal in life. So any of the Jaws movies, I'd be fine with uh, Open Water, something like that. I think they were great whites. I'm very excited for this Blake Lively movie called The Shallows, where I don't know if she's going to survive or not. Right. But I know I'm rooting for the great white shark because, again, there's no cooler way to die than to be eaten whole by a great white shark. Ellis, let me make that a little harsher reality for you. Imagine the shark just grips onto your leg. You're yeah. still alive and it's just constantly drowning mm. you for about six or seven hours. But in your excruciating pain. That's how you want to get Yeah, my, my pain threshold is extremely high <laughs> right. um, when I'm being chewed on by a if shark. If it's a shark, you might almost be in ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. Right? It'd just be cool to be that close to a great white shark. You're insane. Here, I've got my insane one. Jumping out of a plane with explosive, explosives <laughs> attached to me so that I kill myself right before I explode on the ground. I would just have it timed. So I jump out of a plane as high as possible and I have explosives and I just trigger it right so I just explode right before See, I impact. wouldn't you wouldn't you want to detonate it as soon as you jump out because no. then more people could have schnapp rain on them no 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 it's more about the fun of falling to right to the very edge and then killing it's, myself it's raining schnapp yeah Dennis <laughs> this conversation started dark it got very morbid do you either want to rescue us from it or do you want to talk about what movie death you want well I'd, I'd want to look like a hero so I'd, 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 I'd want to like have a burning building and running in there saving oh children, puppies, and kittens. You know, there like you just like there's a ton of them. So I keep going in there, grab like five of them, bring them down, and just keep doing that. And at the very end, you know, I just have them. Smoke exactly. I, like, I just oh. collapse on the ground. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you this you can be the hero you want on land. If you. <laughs> If you try to rescue me from the jaws of this great animal okay. and you end up being the one getting eaten and I somehow survive, I'm going to be very upset. Wait, let's find out. Ashley, how do My you want to die? You guys are so dramatic yeah. and you want to suffer. I've I, I thought about this a lot. Yeah. I just want to be shot. 
<laughs> Get it over with. You know, I don't want to like, oh, have my leg eaten by a shark and like explode and think about my death. I just want to die, you know? Okay, well, if you want to be boring, yeah. I mean, we can take care yeah, of that in yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's do two more <laughs> tweets and then we'll take Ashley out back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Boy writes, I can't even, which has been the most interesting chemistry you have seen in a movie between two actors? Uh, the shark and Richard Dreyfuss. <laughs> um, the most interesting chemistry I've ever seen between, I'll tell you what the worst one is, is The Natural with uh, Robert Redford and Glenn oh. Close. Just a loveless, boring relationship <laughs> for 20 years. But the best chemistry I've ever seen. You know, I hate to get all sappy and emotional here, but uh, God, the, the, the Titanic, watching Leo and Kate run around on that ship together. They come from two different worlds, you guys, because Leo is just a stowaway, then Kate is in, is engaged to Billy Zane. He's the Phantom. He's the coolest guy on the planet. And yet, they have this great dirty dancing thing. Speaking of dirty dancing, Swayze and Jennifer Grey. Bit creepy when you really break down the numbers, but right. I think Titanic is the one I'm going to stick with. See if you guys can top I'm that. going with Body Heat, William Hurt, Kathleen Turner. There's that one scene where there's That's like really good. Just roasting. So, Are we talking about yeah. romantic chemistry or just any chemistry at all? Chemistry, was, period. Uh, yeah, because I was thinking of uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid with Paul Newman and uh, Ooh, Robert Redford. Really good. They had yeah. great chemistry. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no love scenes that I'm aware no. of. But, uh, yeah, the nice guys also looks like something like, like I love like, watching that, like watching like a buddy cop like Mel Gibson and Danny Glover play off each other in Lethal Weapon. There's a reason why they made four of those movies, and it's because their chemistry is on point. All right, last Twitter question of the day, and then Ashley... Your fate is sealed. Okay, I don't know if this is spoiler territory or not, so let me know and I'll go to the next question. Okay. Um, but Joe Campbell writes, is Spider-Man's role in Civil War a brief cameo or does he actually play a bigger part in the movie? Uh, that is for you guys to determine. Is that think a it's spoiler? I think it's spoiler and we cover in our non-spoilers review. Okay. But... Okay. Everyone said he's in it more. He's in it more than he's in one scene. He's in more than one scene. It's not so. a cameo, but he's also not a main right. character. So okay. it, it was a good amount of time. Yeah. All right, so you'll, you're be, you'll be you'll be you'll be satisfied with be, how much yeah. time. Incredibly he's in. happy is what you'll be. Yeah. So. so he's not the star of it. No, not no, at all. We're gonna save that for when he comes home. Right. Spider Man. Homecoming. <laughs> Homecoming. Well, that's all the time we have today on Collider Movie Talk. Thank you guys so much for joining us. You were lighting up the chat room. Ton, thousands of you guys watched us live. Thank you so much for doing so. I want to thank everybody behind the scenes as well as the people up here at the desk with me who are all going to die in very creative ways. <laughs> <laughs> except, for, except for Ashley Mova. Yeah. Yeah. Quick death. just wants to go out. Like, going out. With a bang. No yeah. pun intended. Yeah, yeah that's right. Woo. What if you just stand on the ground and then snap when he detonates? You can just like take out Ashley. No, with that's it. Yeah. too much work. Because she might not just die. She might shot. still be alive. Yeah, like, I don't want to suffer. Yeah. It could be really horrible and you're <sighs> rushing her to the hospital. She still survives. She's armless and legless and in pain for the rest of her life. No. Not like what you did, Mark. Not like yeah. what you did. All I'm saying, Way to we, go, we, Ellis. We, we could have gone on a great deep sea adventure, but you said no. Dennis, <laughs> where can the, the kids find you? Well, you can find me on uh, the Russo Brothers interview up on the YouTube channel and on the non-spoilers review for Captain America Civil War that goes up at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You also can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. John Schnepp, you're competing in the movie trivia Schmodown next week That's against right. Finstock. This Finstock. week is Clark Wolf versus Josh McCuga. Hashtag Schmodown. In the meantime, where can the kids find you to show their support of you going into the movie trivia battle? Right on. Well, you guys can find me at uh, just uh, at John Schnepp on Twitter and Instagram. You can support my Kickstarter, which is its, in its last week. It's Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd. Y'all pitch in now, or I can't make the movie if I don't make the money. So it's up to you guys. Uh, definitely check it out, Kickstarter, Sweaties Unite, and uh, you can see my Doctor Strange reaction. Action. It should be up in about 20 minutes. And it's very, very good. Ashley, where can everybody find you? You guys can find me out back and on Twitter and on Instagram <laughs> at Ashley Mova. Happy Wednesday, guys. Well, make sure you guys check out amctheaters.com. That's where you go for all your latest box office and showtime information. And bookmark collider.com on your interweb machine. That's where we get a lot of our breaking stories, as well as you should, too. And Collider Video is where you go on YouTube. You're here right now. Subscribe to us. And while you're subscribing to YouTube channels, head on over to Christian Eyes channel schmoes no that's all for us here my name is mark else i'll be at the comedy store in uh hollywood on sunset boulevard this friday and saturday provided i don't go surfing in the meantime you can find me on twitter at mark ellis live we'll see you guys tomorrow exploding shark <laughs> bullet to the head yeah hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider